Hi, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ms. Skoken. We're back with AP Statistics. We're going to be talking about Chapter 7, Sampling Distributions. And Section 7.1 is going to give us the definition and a lot of the definition of sampling distributions and a lot of vocabulary. Once we get to sections 7.2 and 7.3, we're going to go further into detail about different types of distributions, whether we're looking at proportions for categorical variables or means for numerical variables. I'm going to ask you to pause the video now so you can read the learning objectives for this section. All right, let's talk about the idea of statistical inference. Inference is when we're trying to learn about our population or make an inference about our population using sample data. That means we take a sample and if we feel like it's what representing our population well, we observe a characteristic of that sample. And once again, if it's representing our population, then we can, we can infer about that specific characteristic about the population. And a population is all of the individuals in our group of interest. A sample is a subset. So that's one concept that's important. And it, hopefully you're able to now distinguish between the population, all individuals, and the one of the subsets or a sample of that population. Okay, now let's talk about the idea of sampling variability. We know that we take a sample and take, for example, we're interested in the average height of North Broward students, high school students. So what we do is we take a sample of 10 students at a time from the North Broward High School population. And when we get those 10 students, we measure their heights and then come up with a mean height. And we continue selecting out of the approximately 750 high school students, 10 at a time. And each time, again, we measure them, we find the mean, we measure them, we find the mean, pick another group, measure them, find the mean, etc. Okay, so every time, because we're getting three different students, some may be repeated because we're doing this with replacement, but anyhow, we take three students, we get a different value for the average height. It makes sense. Different people get picked, so the height average is going to be different. Now, that idea is going to lead us to the idea of a sampling distribution because what we'll be able to do is take that sample statistic or the, the average height, the mean height that we calculated, and we will be able to graph all of the mean heights. We would need to take, of size uh, sample size three, we would need to take enough samples so that we'd be able to come up with a sampling distribution. So again, we'll talk more about that, but that gives you a basic idea. Now, because we have this sampling variability, every single time we get a sample we're going to get a, a big difference or a slightly different value. What's going to end up happening is we're going to start to look at that sample mean as a random variable because we know random variables can take on lots of different values and with different possible probabilities. That's how we're going to start to look at sample statistics. Okay, so let's take a look at this vocabulary of parameters and statistics. And there's kind of an easy way to remember. We know what a population is. It's all of the individuals in our group of interest. Parameters are numbers that describe the population. So, for example, the population mean, the population standard deviation, the population median, the population range, the population IQR, and we could be talking about any parameter. So for example, if we're still interested in the heights of North Broward students, it could be the height of all North Broward students or the standard deviation of the height of all North Broward students and so on. When we're talking about a sample, we are talking about a subset. We mentioned that previously. And that subset, we may want to calculate the sample mean. When we calculate the sample mean or the sample standard deviation or the sample IQR, etc., we're dealing with statistics. So statistics are numbers that represent or that describe characteristics of the sample 
and parameters are numbers that describe the characteristics and describe the population. So pause the video now so you can write down the formal definitions or at least notes on the formal definitions. We know that we've been using the Greek letter mu in order to represent the population mean and the the non-Greek letter, the Roman letter X bar, that symbol to designate the sample mean. We haven't really been really strict when we've been talking about the mean, we've kind of used them interchangeably, but we're going to be more strict about it right now. And when we talk about population proportions, so for example, something along the lines of 60% of students love math, then we would be using P, lowercase p, to represent the population per proportion, okay? And then when we're trying to designate the sample proportion, so of our sample, what percentage love math, we would use the symbol P hat. And that would be an estimator of the population parameter. So we would use the sample to try to represent what we believe about the population. It may be exact, it may not be exact, but we're going to assume that it's one way that we can estimate the population parameter. Let's talk a little bit about sampling variability. We know that every time we get a sample, we get a different value. So we call this sampling variability. So what would happen if we took many, 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 many samples? Well, they would all have different values. And how can our X bar, all of them different, be an accurate estimate of mu? Because they all have different values, what we're, we're going to look at is we're going to look at a distribution of all of those samples. And we're going to take a look at an activity in your book on page 418, so pause the video now so you can read the example. Okay, so there are 200 chips in the bag. 100 of them are red and the other 100 are a different color. We pull out 20 at a time, so our sample size is 20, and we record how, what proportion or what percentage of the sample, the 20, are red. Throw them back in and then pick another sample. Record the proportion of how many are red, throw them back in, take another sample. And we're going to keep doing that until we are able to graph the sample proportions that we got out of our sample size 20. And once we get the distribution, what we're going to do, and sometimes we need 50, sometimes we need 100, sometimes we need more, sometimes we need less, but basically we're going to repeat this for a certain number of times, maybe 50 times, and then what we're going to be able to do is draw a distribution of our sample proportion. So you can see on this slide we have the sample proportions drawn. Now what we're interested in is taking a look at the sample and trying to come up with a population or an estimate for a population parameter. So now what we did is we graphed the values of the sample proportions. Imagine that for a particular sample size, we took every single possible combination and we graphed all of those. If we graphed every single one, every single combination of a particular sample size, we would end up with a sampling distribution. That then would be, and you're going to want to write this definition down, but the sampling distribution of a statistic is a distribution of values taken by the statistic in all possible samples of a particular size from the same population. So we know that in practice it's very, very difficult to do this unless we have a very small sample size. So instead of taking all the combinations of a particular sample size, we usually just take many. So uh, a large enough number that it is practical, reasonable, affordable for us to take that many samples. And we'll use simulation sometimes, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. So population distributions versus sampling distributions. It's very important that you're able to distinguish between these three because they are different and they have different purposes. So let's pretend again that we're interested in the height of all North Broward students. 
if we actually took the height, measured the height of every single North Broward student and graphed that histogram, that would be our population distribution because it's for all the individuals in our group of interest. The distribution of the sample data is something very different. So if we took one sample and we graphed the value of the heights for that one sample, for all the individuals in that one sample, so 20 students, let's say, that would be the distribution of our sample data for a single sample. Now the sampling distribution is something different again because it deals with all of the many samples that we took and we graph the either the proportion or the mean or, or whatever sample statistic we're interested in for all the different samples. Okay, pause the video and write these down. Draw, write down a description of each type so that you know what you're talking about. So once again, in that chip activity where we have half red and half some other color and we're going to imagine it's blue, what, the population distribution is what it is. We have 200 chips, half of them are red, half of them are blue. So the frequency is 100 of each. The population parameter is 0.5. Every time we take a sample, and here you can see we have three different samples, we get a slightly different value. So in the first sample of size 20, we had 12 blue ones and 8 red ones for a total of 20. That gave us a 40% p hat or proportion of red. In the second sample, we got more red. We got 55% red, still with our sample size of 20. And in the third sample, that, or we took then dot, 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 you can see that. And then the last sample that we took, we ended up with a proportion of reds of 65% with 13 red chips and seven blue chips. Once we took all of those possible combinations of size 20, and we graphed every single one of them on a histogram, what we ended up with is this sampling distribution that you see all the way on the right. We know that we want to be able to take a sample and make an inference about the population, but how good is the value of our sample in terms of being able to estimate the value of our population? So what we're going to look at is this idea of biased and unbiased estimators. We collected samples of size 20 and calculated the sample proportion of red chips. We graphed that and we want to know how close is the sample proportion estimate to the two, true proportion of red chips, which is 0.5. And we notice that the center of our sampling distribution, which you remember is all possible samples of size 20, we notice that the center of our sampling distribution is at 0.5, which is exactly our population proportion. So because of that, we call the sample statistic used an unbiased estimator. That's when the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the mean of the population. When we have samples, we said we're going to have variability amongst the different samples. The lower the variability, the better it is. So what it does is we know that we have greater accuracy when we have a narrower standard deviation. What ends up happening is the larger samples or sample size that we use, the larger sample size that we use, the more narrow we see our sampling distribution get. And what that means is we end up having a low variability. So the variability of a statistic is described by the spread of the sampling distribution. The spread is determined primarily by the size of the random sample. That means the sample size dictates how much of a standard deviation we're going to have. Larger samples have a smaller standard deviation. The spread of the sampling distribution does not depend on the size of the population as long as the population is at least 10 times larger than the sample. That is the condition that we came across in section 6.3. We use this idea of bias, or how far away is it from the center, and how much does it vary? Do we have a consistent sample after sample after sample close to our population value? So turn off the video if you need to take notes here. All right, we're going to continue this discussion in the next video, so we'll see you in a few minutes.